Yeah, a week from today. Week from today. So super excited about that. Super excited to see a lot of awesome faces at that uh, retreat. Um, the other thing I wanted to cover real quick, let me see if I can pull it up while I'm doing this. Um, want to pull up the top 20. So top 20 we have in 19th place in the Achievers Club, Zane and Summer McCourtney with 12 points. Um, in 14th place, Don and Laurel Holsinger with 17 points. Way to go, guys. In 12th place, we have Alan Nicole Blaine with 25 points, crushing it. And uh, ninth place, we have Brian and Carrie Foss with 26 points. And then in uh, second place, overall, we got Kyla and Adam Van Wingerden with 45 points. So you guys are crushing it, knocking it out of the ballpark. Um, sorry, switching around here because I'm on a phone. <laughs> Alan, can you hear me? Is it the reception okay? Okay. Well, we stopped here in the beautiful California Central Valley in order to uh, get reception. We wanted to make sure we had reception. Um, I'm super, super excited. I think I think that is all I need to do on um, housekeeping, but I'm super excited about our speaker today. And it's the reason why I'm uh, pulled over on the side of the road is to enjoy what he has to share. So Alan Blaine, most of you guys, well, if you don't know him, you should, because he's an incredible leader, the leader, I call him in the Wisdom Builders team. And he's going to share with us today. Alan, so excited to have you on the call. Please take it away. Awesome. Thank you, Dwight. Where are you heading, by the way? I'm heading to Los Angeles, um, and then I'm taking my whole family to the airport. They're flying up to Colorado, and I have a little bit of work to do in L.A., and then I'm heading towards Florida in the RV. Um, we got the little RV behind us parked here on the, on the lookout, but uh, I'm going to be flying back to pick them up in Pensacola, Florida, because they're flying to Colorado to visit friends or family and then they're flying all the way back to florida so we can drive up to the retreat because we're all heading to the retreat wonderful so. the whole family i love it now are you all okay good well we'll talk more about details we can't wait to see you a week from today hey so i look I forward to it one. thank you <laughs> awesome well hey everybody I, i'm really excited about uh the topic i want to share with you this morning in fact um, I don't know that I, it will take super long. Dwight got the mic to me quickly, and I, I think I have 10 or 15 minutes to share, maybe 15 minutes, probably at most. So if there's any comments, questions, or conversation about it, feel free to fire away um, as soon as I share what's on my heart. And what's on my heart is to talk about um, this morning. The By the way, if you're watching this in the Facebook group and you did not, um, you do, you're not getting the text notifications because I know we have a lot of new people joining the team, new promoters. Um, and so if you're not a part of this, you need to just send a text. Uh, where is that? WB, blah, blah, blah. Let me come back to that phone number because for some reason, oh, I'm in the wrong app. That's why. Hold on. I will tell you right now, send a text to 678 Seven three six eight zero seven one six seven eight seven three six eight zero seven one WB for Wisdom Builders to that number and that'll get you subscribed. Okay, so we are November fourth. We are two months essentially left in the twenty twenty two year, and I want to talk about that because this is the time of year um, that if you're listening to leadership calls, you've heard this conversation said differently than probably I'm going to say it, but you've heard this communicated before, but it, 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 even if, if you've heard it from somebody else like Witt or Ashley or whoever, it bears repeating again. And I want to share with you some of the things that Nicole and I were asked to share at the world team vacation, which is a vacation. We have one formal, which is a incredible breakfast um, meeting where I think it might have lasted an hour and a half, basically while we're eating breakfast. Um, some different things were shared. Other than that, it's like hanging out on the beach and holding parrots and having fun. But um, during that breakfast meeting, uh, Nicole and I were asked to share this on this topic. And so that's what I wanted to bring to all of you and those that were already at World Team. Um, I think we need to hear it again because it's November 4th. We have two months left in the year, and I want to tell you this morning, I want to share my heart with you of why I believe, and I'm not the only one that believes this, and I'm going to give you some things to back it up, why these two months 
are the most critically important time of the year to be focusing on our business. Okay, so first point is, and this applies all year long, is your team and your future team and your club members that are considering becoming part of your team and you don't even know it, your team will do what you do. It's just the way it is. Our walk talks and our talk talks, but our walk talks much louder than our talk talks. People are watching what we do much, much more than they watch what we say. That's why showing up on these calls and showing up at retreat and showing up at events, we have no way to measure the impact that that has on other people that are watching and looking and seeing if we believe what we say is so amazing by walking it out. Are we using the products? Are we being a product of the product? Are we talking to people about this thing we think is incredible? So that's point number one, and it applies year round. It's the only one of these points probably that applies year round, but just remember your team, you know, we need to be reminded, I need to be reminded of this all the time. Our team does what we do. It is, it is a incredible phenomenon. You recruit, you prospect, you have a lot of conversations. It's more than likely to duplicate in your team. But if you don't recruit and you're not having conversations, it will almost 100% that will duplicate in your team. Okay. So don't forget that. Second thing is, Remember that there's always what I call a lag effect. There is always a lag effect in this business and it can come back and bite you. It can be deceptive and it's not a hard and fast rule of time, but I'm going to call it the 90 day rule. Okay. It sometimes shows up much sooner than 90 days and sometimes it takes longer than 90 days to show up. But if I had to pick a number roughly is a two to three month lag time in the activity and the conversations that we're having today and the fruit of that. Now I'll have conversations today and you might have a conversation with somebody today and they sign up today. It happens at booths. It happens online. It happens in person all the time, but they don't always usually happen the same day that we start a conversation as we all know that have been doing this more than a week, right? So there's a lag effect. Some of those conversations turn into signups today, some tomorrow, some a week from now, some five years from now will be a signup, right? And everywhere in between and some never. But the lag effect is what we're doing today, we're not going to really notice, notice the full magnitude of either positive or negative if it's a lack of action until maybe a month or two or three later. So what we're doing in November and December is really going to show itself positive or negative in the most maybe exciting time of the year, January, February, March, the first quarter, when people are hyper-focused on how am I going to pay down that credit card debt? How am I going to lose the 15 pounds I gained over the last 60 days? How am I going to fill in the blank, right? Okay, so there is a lag effect. So be aware of that. So what we're doing in November and December, we're going to get signups. Don't think you're not, but you're going to really notice the effect of it at the beginning of the year. Number three, we should have a this nice January mentality all the time. We shouldn't just kick back and take off the gas pedal for a month or two or three in the fall and winter and then go, hey, it's January 1st. Everybody wants to get healthy. Boom, let's go. It's time to get to work. That's stinking thinking. I mean, we should be consistent in our business. We should have consistent activity year round. Every month should be consistent. Every week should be consistent optimally, ideally, right? That's the goal anyway. So have that it's January every month. Don't wait till January to get going. By then it's you've missed a whole bunch. Number four, it's stinking thinking to think because I know I've struggled with this before. I cut myself shaving. So I'm gonna keep wiping my face here. I don't know if it shows up on camera, but it's bugging me. Um, it's stinking thinking to think that, you know what? It's like the holiday season. I don't want to bother people. Let me ask you this. I want to hopefully help you with your mindset. Because I've thought that. <laughs> I've thought that. I still can be tempted to slip into that, especially when I get a week away from Thanksgiving and even a week after Thanksgiving, like those two weeks and maybe the week before Christmas to the week after Christmas, those two weeks. Well, guess what? Those two weeks around Thanksgiving and those two weeks around Christmas is an entire month. That's almost 10% of our year. We, we cannot, here's what I, what I think helps. It helps me. Stinking thinking to say, I don't want to bother people. Now I'm not calling people on Christmas day and Thanksgiving day. I'm not recommending you do that. I'm going to address that, how, how, I think we should handle the holidays, but it's thinking, thinking to think, I don't want to bother people any time of the year because you got to think about it this way. 
are you grateful somebody shared Neolife with you because of the blessing of the products and or the blessing of the income opportunity or the potential income opportunity you're working towards that maybe you haven't even realized yet because you're just getting started or both in most all of our cases, I believe. Of course we are. We wouldn't be on this call if we weren't grateful for what we had. So is it a bother to share something good with somebody? I think we agree. The answer is no. It's how we go about it, obviously. That matters very much. How we're perceived, how we communicate it. That's another talk. But just keep in mind, it's not a bother to share good news with somebody. It's not a bother to ask somebody if they're open to looking at a solution to bless and benefit their life. Keep that frame of mind year round. Okay, that's super important. And I'll even take it so far as to say this. Oh, this isn't in my notes. If we withhold good from somebody, and I was sharing this with somebody yesterday, if we withhold good from somebody because we fear what they might think about us, are we caring more about what's best for them? Are we caring more about us and our feelings and our emotions, what someone might think right, wrongly, potentially about us? Well, we know the answer. We're caring more about us and our feelings and our emotions and what someone might think about us than what's best for the other person. Better health, better wealth, community of amazing people like you. So what do I call that? I call it selfish. And I was sharing with another introvert like myself yesterday, I think, or the day before. These are mind games. I don't want to call them mind games, but they're self-talk that I do to myself because I, I believe it. Not because it's a game, but because it's real. I truly believe it's selfish when I let my fear hold me back from asking somebody if they're open to looking at a solution that can bless their life. I call it selfish. So I tell myself, Alan, when I start feeling these things that are holding me back, it's like, okay, Alan, do you want to be selfish or do you want to be a servant? Do you want to offer value to others or do you want to keep it to yourself? Well, obviously I know the answer. Then get over yourself and have some courage and do it in a loving way. Of course, do it in a wise way, do it in a smart way. Again, there's ways, wrong ways and right ways to you know, I, I don't want to sound spammy and I don't want to have commission breath that stinks. I don't want to do that. Okay. So, but I, but I do want to share and care and care enough to share and care enough to ask if they're open. So I digress. That wasn't even in my notes, but where was I at? It's stinking thinking number four to think we don't want to bother people. Let's get rid of that. Okay. Now it would be probably a bother to interrupt some, we don't want to interrupt people in the middle of their Christmas dinner or Thanksgiving dinner, whatever. All right, number five. So do I think we should take a day or two or three or four maybe off around Thanksgiving and Christmas and just fully invest into our families and enjoy that time? Of course, but not a week, not, let alone not two weeks, let alone not two months of it's the holiday season, November and December. I mean, let's take off a day before Christmas and Christmas and the day after if we want to. Let's take off three days or whatever. I'm not trying to tell you what to do, just kind of my mindset around Christmas and around Thanksgiving. Sure, if that's what you want to do or a day or two days, whatever. But let's not take off two months because one, a couple of days can turn into a week, which can easily turn into two weeks, which can turn into this mindset of it's the holiday season from now until January. And you know, I've, I, I've used the analogy for years of like a, a uh, you know, in a throttle in a airplane, it, it, you push it. I mean, at least the airplanes I've been in and the ones I've flown, you, you push like this, you slide it forward, but it doesn't matter what it looks like. I guess you, you give throttle when you want take off in an airplane, you don't, you don't go partial, you go hammer down all the way and you cannot let off of that. You can't pull back at all on that throttle until you're up to a certain, you know, till you're, you've got takeoff, you're flying, you're literally flying. And in this business, we can throttle back. I mean, can Marjorie and Lawrence with a bunch of leaders in their organization building, whether they build or not, whether they talk to a single person the rest of their life about Neolife or not, their business is going to grow. I can tell you that will, I know that. So they could, they can throttle back as much or little as they want. But when we're building and we haven't got lift off yet, we haven't got our business into momentum yet. There is no half throttle, quarter throttle, pull back, start, push. I'll tell you, you'll run out of runway. Thankfully, we don't run out of runway. We can always, there's always tomorrow in this business, but we need to hammer down and be consistent to, to get lift off. And you don't do that by taking off weeks at a time, let alone months at a time. Okay. So number six, you want to share 
during these next couple months, because during these next couple months, we think, at least I used to think, you know what, it's January 1st when people are like ready to get going with their New Year's resolution. First of all, we're not just selling New Year weight loss. We're not just selling New Year's resolutions. We are offering financial solutions. And do you think people are thinking about their finances right now as they're making Christmas lists and thinking about holidays? And of course, in fact, arguably as much as any other month and months in the year, maybe January the most because they're sick to their stomach about the credit card debt that they put on for the Christmas presents. But I'm telling you, we all know it starts right now. Finances are front and center and everyone has to face them or the lack thereof. And we offer that. Let's not think we're just selling nutritional products. So what's the best season of the year to be offering financial solutions? Or I'll say, say it another way. What's the best season of the year to be asking people if they're open to looking at a financial solution, a way to have a debt-free Christmas as Whit and Ashley are talking about? However you want to frame that, it doesn't matter. It's a financial solution. Now is the best time to offer that during these next couple of months. And if you want to just focus on health and wellness, let me address that. Do you think people wait till January 1st to start formulating their game, game plan on how they're going to lose the 10 pounds they know they're in the process of putting on right now, or the same 10 pounds they had on last Christmas that they realized they never did lose last January and February, and they're ticked about it? They're already formulating a plan. Not everyone, but so many of them are already deciding right now what they're going to do January 1st and or some are not even going to wait. I think that's another one of my points. Some aren't going to wait till January 1st. People are enrolling and getting on weight loss programs every day of the calendar year. And it's not always knee life. Okay. So don't forget that. The point of this is number six is people aren't waiting until January 1st to start figuring out a financial solution or a health solution. They're thinking about it already right now. They are primed right now. Now, yes, a lot might wait till January 1st to start but a lot will start right now. I guess that's point seven. Many won't wait to start till January. I'm going to combine those two. They won't wait. They're ready right now. Number eight, many more, and I kind of said this already, will be ready for extra income right now, okay? Um, I don't know what my notes are here, so I'm just going to say this. I don't know what number it is. It might be coming in the next three or four that I'm going to finally mention here, but you've probably heard it said, and it is true. November and December are the best months to recruit other partners, other promoters, other business builders. And I don't know a person in our organization, in this team, in this company that doesn't say, I would like to have, they might even say I need, but I would like to have more promoters in my team. As I shared with somebody earlier this week, how many people how, how excited are you about the business and how many people have you shared that enthusiasm with and how many of those people have you asked if they're open to just taking a look at what we do and becoming your partner? Not, you're not asking to marry them. You're just asking them, Hey, are you open to, I don't know. I'm never online dated, but I guess it's kind of like, Hey, are you open to looking at my profile and seeing if you want to go out to coffee afterwards? That's all we're doing. Are you open? We're not asking them to marry us or join our business. But the point is this, how many people have you even proposed the business to looking at it, just looking at it? And if it's a small little number, and it, oh, I can tell you it's a small number of those you proposed it to that will actually do it. How do we expect to have business partners? Like literally, like, let's just walk in reality here. How, how do we expect to have business partners if the people we come in contact on, with online and in person don't sense that we're excited about something and that we're asking, inviting, sharing our vision for where we're going as a as your own business, as a team, wisdom builders, as as Neo Life at in at Whole North America. Whatever your vision is, it's your vision. But sharing it, why you're doing it, why this extra five hundred a month that you're working towards, what the game changer that's going to be for your family budget, whatever it is, it doesn't have to be some massive, massive, massive vision like mine is. It can be your vision. And sharing that with people and asking if they're open to taking a look. Anyway, I want to say this. If there's ever the most amazing time, and again, every month is an amazing time. But if, if I had to pick what are the best months to ask people if they're open to a financial solution, there's no better months than November and December. Most leaders in our industry were recruited in November and December. 
Most leaders in our industry, I'll say it again, were recruited in November, and December. You know what that means? It means most leaders, most six and seven figure income earners moving forward that are recruited in the calendar year of 2022 will be recruited in November and December. Here's a question for you. Whose company would you like them to be in? They're going to join. And for the percentage of those that join Neolife, how many of them would you like to be in your organization? And after you answer that for yourself, ask yourself, why would they join my organization? Do they even know I have an organization to join? Right? So some food for thought. What an amazing time to recruit other business partners. And again, if you start these conversations, and we're going to talk at retreat about simple, simple ways to start these conversations. If you're like, how do you even start the conversations? We're going to talk about that next weekend, among many other things. But even if they don't join you in November or December, you planted seeds. You hung a sign in front of your shop that says, I'm open now. They're not going to forget. Now they're watching and they're looking and they're watching actions and they're watching posts and they're watching your enthusiasm. And they're watching your belief. They're watching your consistency. They're watching to see, is she still doing it six months from now? Or did that just pass by like every other person that ever started one of those things that I've seen get excited for two weeks? I'm telling you. These are super important, but basic elementary things. Okay. I loved Witt's analogy to sports. Those of you that are so excited to watch the number three ranked football team in the nation, University of Tennessee crush, the number one ranked University of Georgia tomorrow, 2.30, 3.30 p.m. Eastern time, like I am. Um, <laughs> oh, I knew someone would unmute those Georgia folks. John, thank you. I needed that. Um, anyway, I got to just keep Josh humble, man. The guy is getting a little too big for his britches over there with that, that, with that number one ranking. But okay, I digress. Let's get back to business. If you, if you know any of us that like sports, there's four quarters in a lot of sports like football. What's the most important quarter to go hard in and finish strong? Whether you're a cross-country runner, you know it's – you finish strong. Whether you're a football player sport or athlete or whatever it's the fourth quarter is always the most important that is how you finish anything is is finish strong you want to start strong you want to be strong the whole way through yes but if you had to pick a quarter to be the most important hey let's finish strong this is our fourth quarter all right 10 i already covered that more leaders in our industry are historically recruited in this, in this quarter so let's not let it pass us by and let's think about them it wouldn't it be sad for those people on their knees at night praying for a financial solution to their life, their credit card debt, the stress it's putting on their marriage, all the things, the stress it's putting on their health, that's a health and wellness issue is financial stress, guys. What about all those people and they get approached by somebody before you or me because we're so uh, self-centered and worried about what people think we won't open and share the miracle in our mouth. And so somebody else with an inferior product and an inferior company and an inferior compensation plan does, and they join them. Should we feel sorry for that person when we had the opportunity to share something better with them? I think we should. Again, it's not a guilt trip, but if I have to guilt trip myself to get into action to help people, then I'm going to call it a win. I don't feel guilty, but it just inspires me to want to help people and get to them before nobody does or somebody else with an inferior solution does. Okay. Um, also, Nicole mentioned at World Team, my 11th point of 12 is that it's a great time to do an incentive. It's a wonderful time to do an incentive. You don't have to do an incentive. Our products are standalone. Amazing. But what an amazing time. You could go to one, two, three people on your team, whoever you or your whole team, but you could go to a few people that are really, you're really investing in and say, hey, every new in, in new club member or promoter, but any new enrollment you get this month that signs up with X number of dollars of sign up and on a, on a Neo ship, I'm going to send them a free this. I mean, I'm just trying to give you ideas uh, and a free, this could be whatever. It could be an Amazon gift card. It could be a Neo life product. It could be a lot of things, but just think outside the box. People are spending money this month. And it's either going to be on Neolife or not on Neolife. And here's another thing. If you think, well, they're buying Christmas presents and all this stuff, Neolife is low on the priority, then you know what? They'll be, then Neolife will be low on the priority. If you think it's expensive, people are going to think it's expensive. If you think people have some knee jerk reaction to one of these network marketing things, then people are, you're going to get tons of those kind of problems in your life 
Whatever you believe is what you're going to, you know, run into out there. Why am I saying that? Oh, so don't believe people aren't going to spend money on Neolife. In fact, there's another company, a friend of mine that's in another network marketing company that also has three product lines, skincare, home cleaners, and nutritionals like us. Not comparable quality of products, but comparable on paper, right? Their biggest month of the year. Get this, improving product. The biggest month of the year is not January, and it's not any other month but November, the month we're in right now. Every year, without fail, this company's entire, and this company's doing hundreds of millions a, a year. Their biggest month is November, moving skincare, nutritional products, and home cleaner. Same things we have. Not as good, same product quality, right? I mean, product, product uh, categories, sorry. Same product categories. So get that out of your mind if you think people aren't wanting to buy our stuff in November. If Anyway, so that's it. Okay, so that's 11. The final one, we're in the perfect storm. This might be the most important one. We're in the perfect storm right now. You've got the fourth quarter. We've already covered all the reasons why this is a great time. I won't go over them again. Combine that with another economic recession. 2008, 2009, if you want to talk about years, more leaders in this industry were recruited out of the real estate market, out of the mortgage broke brokers, out of all kinds of things, every, every profession in 2008 and 2009. Why? And, and 10, because during hard economic times, historically, network marketing booms. Why? Because we don't just offer nutritional products. We offer financial solutions. We offer freedom. We offer geographic freedom. We offer all the things. So it's the perfect storm. You're in the fourth quarter. People, finances are right in everybody's face as they're thinking about the holidays ahead. Interest rates are on the rise. Big companies like uh, Google, Amazon, laying off people. I mean, it is inflation out of control. The average household budget, the average household income, something like 50 grand a year, the average household income, buying power has dropped by $4,000 a year. 8% makes sense. You have 8% inflation since January. Your 50,000 buys you $46,000 worth of stuff now. Guess what? They just lost four grand of income. 50 grand wasn't enough to pay the bills to begin with. That's why everybody has credit card debt. Now you just took away 8% of their income with inflation. Some of those are getting laid off. Amazon employees, Google employees, and many others were in the fourth quarter. They've got little kids smiling at them wanting Christmas presents. I'm just telling you, it's the perfect storm. You can recruit them or you cannot, I would like to all of us recruit them together because it's really, really fun to get to offer this. Real estate prices going down. Uh, there's just so many things happening right now where it's just very, very exciting. I guess that was more than 10 to 15 minutes. I'm excited for retreat. I don't know if you can tell. It's going to be the best ever. I hope to see you all there. And if you just absolutely can't be there, it's not too late to buy a ticket, by the way. If you absolutely can't be there, um, make sure you don't miss it virtually, which will also give you access to all the recordings afterwards. Make sure your team gets a virtual ticket. Uh, make sure prospects that are considering the business get a virtual ticket or come in person. It's a great prospecting thing. I was reminded of that recently. Thanks to you, Jamie. Any comments or questions? Because we're out of time. Sorry that took longer than I thought. I had a lot more to say than I thought. I'm excited about this. This is the time. Well, Alan... I I just wanted to say one thing. So it sounds like you're saying, and I totally agree that when we see people in the top 20 on the leaderboard in January, it didn't just happen. Those are people that during the holidays were laying the groundwork and were, you know, working while other people were maybe snoozing or, or, you know, not being intentional with their business. So don't, don't be jealous, but get on the, get on the plan now. If, if, if you want, see your business grow the next year. Is that what I'm, is that, would you say, is that correct? Exactly. hundred percent. Well, then I just want to remind you too, don't be jealous of the Bulldogs, you know, at all. The Bulldogs, you know, Coach Kirby was being under, being disciplined and coached and, you know, up for years under, the, under what many say, and I hate to say this, one of the greatest coaches in college football, but Georgia just didn't get to this point. You know, we weren't the national champions last year for nothing and one ranked this year. There's a lot of parallels, I think, between your talk and what I see happening tomorrow.